Today we're making soft and fluffy jollof rice, going with beautifully seared chicken that's going to be folded through it. This right here is chicken jollof rice meal prep. Let's get straight into it. Starting out, we're going to need two red bell peppers or capsicums for my Australian and New Zealand friends. Place these over your burners and place them onto a high heat. What we're going to do with these is char them pretty much until they're completely black. What this does is allows them to steam internally and take on a beautiful smoky flavor. Once that is done and you have something that looks like this, we can then place these into a small bowl, just stack them on top of one another, and then just simply wrap these up nice and tight just so no air can escape and this will continue steaming and allow these to be beautifully soft and a lot easier to work with. In the meantime, we'll prepare our chicken. I'm using one kilo of chicken breast for this recipe. All I'm doing here is just butterflying it, just opening it up like a butterfly, hence the name, and then just slicing it in half to create two even sized fillets. You can change the amount of chicken here, but it will affect the macros at the end. Once that's done, place this into a large mixing bowl, and then we're going to add in two and a half grams of both onion and garlic powder for concentrated flavors, one teaspoon of smoked paprika for that nice smoky peppery taste, and then just season this up with salt and cracked black pepper, about 20 cracks worth. Get in there with your tongs or clean hands, just give this a quick mix through, making sure everything's evenly combined and we're going to pop this aside for the time being. And if you like more seasoning, you can add more, but it doesn't need it just because there's so much flavor in the rice. Now for the Jamaican curry powder, this is one quarter of a teaspoon of ground coriander, ground yellow mustard, ground fenugreek, ground allspice, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of ground turmeric, one quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger, and one quarter of a teaspoon of ground chili powder, and then just get in there with a whisk and mix this all together until everything's evenly combined and then we can pop this aside for the time being. We're then using three red onions for this recipe. Two will be used for one thing and one will be used for the other. As for the two, we can just slice these in half and just give them a rough chop into nice big chunks. And this is going to go in a blender so it doesn't matter what size it is. And then as for the remaining one onion, just slice this nice and thin in the half moon position. I'm using five fresh tomatoes for this recipe. I know they can be expensive. If you want to cut costs, you can use canned tomatoes. But if you are using fresh, just slice these in half and then give them the same size chopping as you did with the onion. It's all going in the blender, so it doesn't matter too much. But it's just a lot easier on the blender if they are a bit smaller. Going back to the charred bell peppers or capsicums, we can then scrape off that charred skin. It should come off quite easily. And I'm just wearing gloves because this irritates my skin and it is a little bit messy. And also we can give these a rinse under water just to remove any excess char. Once cleaned off, we can then break this apart with our hands, there's no need to use a knife here. Pick out the stem, remove any excess seeds and pith, and you can also rinse this underwater as well just to get rid of anything else. And also if you don't want to do this, you can buy these in a can as well, but fresh is always best for this type of recipe. Once that's done, all of the vegetables can be added into a blender or food processor bowl. It might not all fit, don't worry too much because we can add to it whilst it's being blended down. But once you can fit as much as you can get in, place this over a high speed, Add in any of the remaining ingredients. I had quite a bit of onion left over. And you might also have a little bit of juice in the bowl. Make sure you add that in for a bit more liquid. And then for another ingredient, I have one habanero here. If you don't like chili, don't add it in. Or you can use other chilies depending on your spice level. But add that in, blend it until it's nice and smooth. A little bit coarse, leaving us with something that looks like this. As for cooking this, we're only using one pan just to save on dishes and get extra flavor out of this in a high rimmed pan or pot over a medium high heat. Add in one tablespoon of any neutral flavored oil. Add in the chicken. You may have to do this in batches. We don't want to steam the chicken. We want to get a nice sear on this. And we're going to sear these for about three minutes on each side. Once that is done, just flip them over. And if the pan gets a little bit dark, just lower the heat. But once they have three minutes on each side, they'll be beautifully cooked in the center. We can then remove them from the pan, place them onto a tray, repeat any remaining batches of chicken, and then just allow these to sit for the time being. Into the same pan over a medium high heat again, add in another one tablespoon of any neutral flavored oil. And this time we're going to add in the sliced red onions, as well as a little pinch of salt. And then just saute these for about three to four minutes, just until they become translucent and soft. These are going to add texture to our rice, as well as pick up any flavor from the chicken. Next to go in is the Jamaican curry powder. This is similar to regular curry powder, but has a little bit more of an earthy warmth to it and a nice little spice, along with three dried bay leaves, as well as one teaspoon of dried thyme for a nice little bit of infusion. Fry this off for about 45 seconds to one minute. Don't let it burn and just keep it constantly moving. Next is three tablespoons of concentrated tomato paste. This will be a beautiful foundation to our sauce. Add this in, give it a really good mix through. Lower the heat to medium because we don't want this to get too dark and just cook this for about three to four minutes just until the oils start to release. Add in a tomato, bell pepper or capsicum and habanero mix. Make sure you scrape the bowl out just to avoid wasting any of this good stuff and then just mix this all together until everything's evenly combined. You'll notice this will get a little bit darker as well just on that base foundation. 
it is a good time to then check and season this to taste. Hit it up with some salt as well as some cracked black pepper. I ended up using about 30 cracks worth. Can also add a little bit of sugar here as well, just to cut back on the acidity, depending on the tomatoes that you used. Once seasoned, give this another really good mix through just so those flavors can become friends. And then what we're going to do is bring this to a boil, reduce the heat to low, and then just let it simmer for about 15 minutes to slightly reduce and take on a nice developed flavor. Let's then add in 750 milliliters of vegetable or chicken stock. I'm using chicken stock for extra flavor, and this is going to be the liquid for our rice to cook in. Give this a really good mix through, and we're going to bring this to a boil. You can also check it again for seasoning if need be. Once it is at a boil, add in 350 grams of washed basmati or jasmine rice if you wanted to, as well as one tablespoon or 14 grams of unsalted butter, which is completely optional. Just adds a creamy and delicious flavor. Give this a really good mix through, making sure nothing's clumped up. We're then going to bring this back to a boil. And once it is at a boil, what I'm adding here is called a cartouche. This is just a sheet of parchment paper that's been cut to the size of a pan. It's going to retain the moisture in the rice. It's completely optional. And we're also going to cover it with a lid. Turn the heat down to low and then cook this for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, turn it off the heat, leave the lid on, and we're going to let this steam for another 10 minutes. And in the meantime, we can prepare our chicken that's been resting away that whole time. Just slice it up however you like. I like to dice it for this recipe. It's easier to eat, but you can definitely just put it into thin strips. After that final 10 minutes on the rice, carefully remove the lid. Just be careful of any escaping steam. Remove that cartouche if you've used it. You can just discard it. There's no need to keep it again. And then use a spatula or a fork and just really gently fluff the rice up. Don't go too hard on this. It will be soft and fluffy. Still have a tiny little bite on it, but if you play with it too much, it's just going to break down. Once it is fluffed up, just add in all of the chicken as well as any of those resting juices for extra flavor and then get back in there again with a spatula and just gently fold this all through until everything's evenly combined and those flavors can become friends. Once it's all been folded through, you'll have this beautiful jollof rice with that delicious chicken. Remove it from the stovetop and this can then be portioned into five 750 milliliter containers and the serving sizes for these are about 450 to 500 grams. Garnish it up with some flat leaf parsley for presentation. Don't put lemon on it like I did. For some reason I thought that would go, but it really doesn't because there's enough acidity in the tomatoes already. But once that's all done, we're left with this beautiful chicken jollof rice that looks and smells amazing. This right here is the complete dish macros, the serving size and everything you need. And then with these, we're allowed them to cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes before placing on the lids. Put them in the fridge for up to three days and in the freezer for up to four months. The only thing that is left to do is of course, we can then Dig in. This is a very filling dish, but it's also a beautiful dish at the same time. The rice is perfectly cooked. It's taken all of that flavor in from the sauce. It's still got that slightest of bite to it as well, so it's not completely falling apart. The chicken's beautifully cooked. You don't have to add that if you don't want to. You can use a wide range of different vegetables, but the chicken adds a little bit more protein. Definitely do make this dish. You can change it up, do whatever you want to it and make it your own. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.